Welcome to Welcome to a tour video on 22.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about forced passage transition. Now, there might be cases as we design interactive stories in Twine using Harlow 3.3 where we want to immediately do something. Usually, when we present different interactions to readers, we are using the connections between passages, links, or we're using something like the link macro or one of its sister macros, link rerun or link repeat. There are some cases, however, where instead of giving the choice over to the reader, we want something to immediately happen. That is, as soon as they interact, something immediately happens, they are forced to go to something else. We can start to create that type of forced passage transition using a macro in Harlow called go to, and it has a hyphen in it, go hyphen to. So I have three different examples here of cases where this might be particularly useful. Right here is an example where sometimes as a reader is progressing a story, instead of immediately providing them a link to another passage or some other thing, you might have a certain situation where you want to immediately go to an ending or you might to immediately restart the story. So example one is a way in which immediately upon clicking the link provided by the link macro right here in example one of in story, it goes immediately to ending right here and then the reader is in that passage with no other links to get out of. So let's go ahead and build a look what this looks like. So in story, I'm immediately in the end of the story. So there might be situations where the reader chooses something poorly or does something that was not advised, or maybe just they clicked on the wrong thing and immediately the story ends, or potentially immediately, maybe the story immediately repeats in particular situations. So one of the cases where is where we want something to immediately happen. Now let's propose a kind of second situation here. I'm going to go ahead and move the start over here to example two. There might be some cases where, depending on the value of a variable, that something immediately happens. So let's say, in this particular case, I'm setting a story-wide variable using the dollar sign right here, stone, to zero. And then I'm going to move over to magic stone. And let's look at how it works. It's a little bit tricky here. So we're providing a link to the reader, it says pick up stone. And then we're setting stone to one if they do that. So if they do that and then they click on end story, similar to how we looked at in the previous example, it checks and creates a comparison. If is stone right here is equal to zero, we go immediately to the ending. Otherwise, you cannot end the story while you hold the stone. And it says, oh, do you mean to give up? And if you give up, we go back to example two and we repeat the whole thing over again. So this one's a little bit tricky because let's look at how this works. So let's move over to magic stone. Now, Depending on what I do as a reader, if I pick up the stone and I attempt to end the story, I can't end the story, but I can give up. Come back to Magic Stone. This time I'm not going to pick up the stone and end the story, and the story has ended. So another usage, as I pointed out previously with the go-to macro, is that we can create immediate consequences for the reader if they do something. There's no give them choices or allow them to navigate between passages or links the consequence is immediate. And this can have amazing narrative effect if you create a story where you tell the reader not to do something, they do, and there's immediate consequences for it. Or in certain situations where you're checking the values of variables, for example, if you have story statistics, or you're checking things like is health at a certain point, or is some other story-wide variable at a certain value or within a certain range or threshold, you can have immediate consequences. That is, maybe when the reader runs out of health, the story immediately ends, or they run out of some other thing you're tracking, mana, health, experience, etc. So let's look at a third potentially incredibly useful way of employing the go-to macro. So for example one, we kind of had an immediate effect, then a user clicked the link immediately into the story. Example two, very similar, but this time in acting using the if macro. Example three is where we combine knowledge of a few different things. So we've previously seen how we can use the display macro to include the contents of one passage in another, and that's an incredibly useful concept when we look at especially more complex interactive stories in Harlow. We've also seen how we can use things like the link macro to create an interface where a user can change the value of a variable. They can increase a statistic or work with something else. So I'm going to jump over to update health and let's look at that and I'll kind of work my way backwards to show you the trick I'm about to pull here. So this is the link macro. It will show the link increase health. When the reader clicks on it, it will increase the value of health by one. So set health to it plus one using the 
it it keyword within the set macro and then we're going to immediately go to update health now here's the trick to this particular pattern this is the passage called update health but notice the go to is included within a hook that's associated with the macro link which means it's not going to run immediately it's going to run when the user clicks the link What's going to happen immediately is that the link will be created, its associated hook will be associated, and then it will look at the contents of the passage statistics. So let's jump over there, and it will show the current value of health. Well, things seem pretty simple so far. It will show this link with the corresponding hook, and then it will show the current value of health. Well, over here in example three, the current value of health is when set to zero, and then we move over to update health. So let's jump over to that to see this particular pattern in action, because this can be another example where the go-to macro can really shine. So over here, setting the initial story-wide variable health to zero, and then we move to update health. But keep in mind, when we click the link, we will go to update health, which is the current passage. Okay, so update health, and it says increase health. Now remember, when we use the link macro, it creates a link and then immediately runs the associated hook, whatever, whatever, was it, whatever is within that hook, and then immediately disappears. But in this case, it's not. Ah, uh, but it is, but in a very interesting way. Every time I click on increase health, we are increasing the story-wide variable by one, increase health, uh, set health to it plus one, that's increasing. And then we're also immediately going to the current passage, which is re-updating whatever was currently being displayed. What is currently being displayed is using the display macro, the contents of another passage in this one, the current value of health. And this is where the go-to macro can particularly shine is in this particular pattern. So what we're doing is we're kind of forcing a reload, forcing a reload, forcing a reload of the same passage every time we correspondingly update a statistic. Now, this may not seem like a particularly exciting pattern, okay, this is going on, but we've previously seen how it can actually get really frustrating because in any other example, instead of using GoTo, we would have to include the display macro inside the hook to get the link macro to affect it. In fact, we could not use the link macro for this purpose. We would have to use link rerun or link repeat. But because we are reloading and the link is getting reloaded, then it doesn't matter what's in the hook because the contents of the passage will be displayed when the entire passage is reloaded. So let me kind of break this up a little bit more. In any other pattern other than using go to, we would have to use link rerun or link repeat, which would load what's in the corresponding hook. Because we're combining this with the power of the go to macro, and we're going to the current passage we are in, we are reloading the entire passage, in which case any other kind of styling or use of the display macro will also be updated correspondingly. In other words, we only need these couple of lines like this for any other multiple statistics we might want to update, and then we can style them however we want using a corresponding display macro, knowing the entire passage will be reloaded using the go-to macro. So I've covered three different patterns in this video of the power of forced passage transition. And the first, in example one, we looked at a way that we can create immediate consequences for a reader. You click on a link, you immediately go to another passage, and that kind of locks you into that part of the story. Very useful knowledge to have. In example two, we looked at the way that the if macro can also correspondingly trigger the go to macro. If values are within a certain range or they're hit a certain threshold or are a certain value, we can immediately trigger something. We could do something like health, mana, experience, or any other statistic we were currently tracking within the story. The third example is where we get more clever, if you prefer, thinking about the different ways we can combine knowledge we already have. We've seen patterns so far in other videos of using the display macro to display the contents of one passage in another. And we know that when that happens, we can do things like show the current value of a variable as or value of a variable as they update. And we see previously seen patterns of using things like link rerun and link repeat to achieve those results in one particular hook, so in affecting a smaller subset of a total passage. With the go-to macro, especially in this last example, 
we can expand that pattern. And in this case, reload the entire passage, which really expands our options, particularly when we're working with examples. And in this case, instead of needing the link rerun or link repeat macros, using the link macro and relying on it to go to the same passage. In other words, refreshing the passage, allowing us to really expand the interactivity we can create by using the knowledge we have of passage transitions, links, and working with other macros like the display macro. So a much more complicated pattern, but incredibly powerful using the go-to macro or a forced passage transition within Harlow 3.3 and within Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.